Hey, I'm Maria Bridge. I work at CHT. I'm going to explain a core concept today on persuasive technology. To some people, the concept of technology hacking our brains may seem fantastical or futuristic. But to those working in technology, it's clear that every day algorithms can influence and even train the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors of billions of people. These algorithms are a form of persuasive technology. And in this video, I'll break down six ways persuasive tech affects our minds. This is the general definition of persuasive technology. Any technology that shapes human attitudes or behaviors. Importantly, persuasive technology can be used for good, like nudging a user into a healthy behavior that they've identified and they've asked for help with. But too often, persuasive technology is used to drive behaviors that benefit corporate bottom lines and prioritize profits over people. So what do we do? Well, the first step is understanding how all this works. So let's dig into the six ways persuasive technology is tapping into human vulnerabilities and hacking our brains. Number one, persuasive technology makes it trivial seem important. Because our attention is a limited resource, at any given moment, our brains need to determine what is important. The salience network of the brain helps us to do that. When the salience network is activated, we are alerted to threats and opportunities. Acting as a kind of circuit breaker, the salience network signals when the brain should direct its resources to new external stimuli. But notifications through vibrations, red dots, and flashing lights constantly trigger the salience network, effectively fooling us into perceiving that something new but trivial is urgent. Of course, there are occasions when an important notification needs to be highlighted, but most of the time, notifications act as false alarms, which compromises our ability to attend to what is important. Number two, encouraging seeking without fulfillment. We want things so that when we get them, we enjoy them. However, the brain circuit involved in wanting is much more powerful than the brain circuit involved in enjoyment. The feeling of wanting something can be so strong that even when we get what we want, we don't get much satisfaction from it. Technology often capitalizes on this, providing endless possibilities for seeking, but few experiences that satisfy us. And as our tolerance increases, we tend to need more to achieve the same effects. That's why we find ourselves continuously clicking and scrolling and mindlessly consuming content, often with minimal oversight from cognitive control regions of the brain. Ultimately, this behavior depletes us, yet all the while is feeding engagement-based business models. Number three, forcing us to multitask. The capacity of our brains to process information is staggering. Billions of neurons have trillions of conversations with one another, which activate the networks of our brains that enable us to go through our day-to-day -day activities. Yet our brain's resources are limited. We're highly distractible creatures, and the quality of our attention can easily be compromised. When we frequently switch attention from one task to another, we experience a kind of attention residue, where thoughts about the previous task interfere with giving our full attention to what's currently at hand. Persuasive technology and social media in particular inspires this type of multitasking. These platforms keep us continuously engaged, triggering repetitive and automated behavior, which weakens activation in the prefrontal cognitive control regions of the brain. A National Academy of Sciences working group found that media multitasking among youth is associated with worsened memory, increased impulsivity, and changes in the brain function, which leads us to number four, weaponizing fear and anxiety. Two decades ago, researchers wrote an influential paper where they famously concluded bad is stronger than good. Negative information gets more attention and shapes emotions and behaviors more powerfully than positive information. Our brains process negative information, especially fear-related stimuli, more quickly and thoroughly than they process positive information. This is also known as loss aversion, and this makes evolutionary sense. In the pursuit of survival, the potential effects of one singular threat outweigh the benefits of one singular experience of pleasure. Outrun the animal chasing you or take your time to enjoy a banana you should probably drop the banana. So it's unsurprising that social media content generating strong negative emotions like fear, anger, and disgust spreads much faster than positive content. When this happens at scale, fear and outrage become the norm, not just in our lives, but in societies. And this can erode our sense of goodness and shared humanity. Number five, encouraging constant social comparison. We are social animals. We naturally evaluate our own worth by comparing ourselves to others. The medial prefrontal cortex in our brain prioritizes information about ourselves. Self-esteem involves an ongoing process of affirming ourselves and fighting off threats to our self-worth. Our habit of measuring ourselves against others sometimes inspires us to achieve more. But comparisons also commonly lead to negative emotions like jealousy, shame, and anxiety. Social media floods us with highly curated images featuring people in slices of moments that show only what they want you to see. 
Influencers establish largely unattainable standards that even subconsciously we may begin to compare ourselves to. Our likes, which activate powerful reward circuits in the brain, can become a measuring stick for our own self-worth and make us question the deepest parts of ourselves. This encouraging of constant social comparison can be disastrous and lead to a variety of harms, including self-doubt, erosion of self-worth, and obsession with self-image. This leads us to number six, telling us whatever we want to believe. Our brains are highly sensitive to social exclusion. Social rejection hurts in the same way physical pain can hurt. Consequently, we experience strong pressure to conform with the masses in order to avoid social exclusion. Now combine this with software algorithms that learn about our preferences and customize and curate the information that we receive. Social media platforms in particular offer us feeds curated around our preferences, unique to us. This creates information bubbles where we're not getting the same information as everyone else, but we may be forming tighter and tighter bubbles with others. And our online bubbles deviating from group norms can carry serious social risk. And when we become invested in a particular view on a topic, we're subject to confirmation bias, which is a tendency to believe information that supports our views and ignore or discredit information that contradicts our views. Critically, this could occur as an unconscious bias, meaning we're not aware that we're filtering information in this way. Online bubbles, confirmation biases, and our innate desire to avoid social exclusion is a problematic combination. It's why our society finds itself subscribing to different versions of reality. When algorithms tell us what we want to believe, we become more and more polarized and lose a sense of ourselves as a cohesive social group with shared understanding. So how many of these six hacks were you aware of? How do you think we can work together to reduce the impact of persuasive technology on society? Tell us in the comments. We're curious and we like to hear from you. And with that, have a humane day.